you know, the murder just happens again and again and again in my mind. I'm free physically, but I'm not free from the trauma. After serving eight years in prison, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, a convicted murderer turned social media sensation, is finally telling it all. From sexual abuse allegations to a prescription pill addiction, a prior murder attempt, and even a voodoo hex with a supposed curse. Here's all the bombshell revelations we've learned since Gypsy Rose's release and what her six-part series left out. Hardest thing was to watch everyone tell my story and, you know, get it wrong and speculate and everything. But now I'm, I'm it's free. Your turn. I have, a, I have, it's my turn now. Yeah. Gypsy pleaded guilty to second degree murder back in 2016 in connection to the death of her mother, Claudine Dee Dee Blanchard. This came after Gypsy's alleged years of abuse, all at the hands of her mother. Because she controlled every aspect of my life. Gypsy was sentenced to 10 years in prison, but was granted parole before that decade-long mark. She was released from Missouri's Chillicothe Correctional Center on December 28th, having served eight years behind bars. Since then, she's become something of a social media icon, amassing millions of followers on multiple platforms. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Followers get snippets of Gypsy's life through her own personal videos, but with the release of her newest series, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, they're given an in-depth account from Gypsy herself. After a lifetime of silence, I finally get to use my voice to share my story and speak my truth. Throughout the docu-series, Gypsy discusses her relationships with her mother, saying, quote, she never wanted me to find love or be happy. Initially, after her mother's murder, Gypsy says she didn't have any remorse. In fact, it wasn't until several years into her prison sentence that Gypsy began missing Dee Dee at all. Gypsy Blanchard is the only victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy who has killed their mother. Gypsy's case shed light on the terms Munchausen's and Munchausen's by proxy. After years of living with what she believed were real illnesses, Gypsy realized she was perfectly healthy. Her sickness was a false narrative, all created by her mother. Munchausen's uh, and Munchausen's by proxy are kind of antiquated names for what we what psychologists call a conversion disorder. Essentially, when we take Munchausen's, the person believes themselves to have some kind of illness. And so they'll do things to make themselves ill in a way to get attention or to get accolades or to get something, right? There's some external source. Munchausen's by proxy is when the individual puts that sickness, puts that illness on someone else. That's the by proxy part. So it's not Gypsy that has Munchausen's. It's her mother that has Munchausen's, right? That's the conversion disorder. And so when it's by proxy though, the individual doesn't know any better. They don't know that they're not sick or maybe as they grow up, they end up realizing that they're not. But the caregiver has purposefully done things to make them sick, has injured the person purposefully to make them sick in order to get the attention that they crave. According to Gypsy's new series, she got into a motorcycle crash with her grandfather when she was about five. She had a few scrapes and bruises, but her mother took it to the next level, forcing Gypsy to use a leg brace and later a wheelchair. That was just the beginning. Why were you in a wheelchair in, in June of 2015? Because my mother forced me to be in one. Do you know why you were forced to be in a wheelchair? No, sir, she just forced me to be in one. And how long had you been in a wheelchair as of June of 2015? <clears throat> Since probably I was about eight years old. According to testimony from Gypsy herself, her mother used medications to create symptoms in her daughter. Then she told others that Gypsy suffered from multiple illnesses, including cancer, muscular dystrophy, and paralysis. Dee Dee maintained Gypsy had the capacity of a seven-year-old, forcing her daughter to use a wheelchair for more than a decade. Was there a time between when you first were put in a wheelchair in June of 2015 that you figured out that you really didn't need to be in a wheelchair? Yes. When was that? I always knew that I didn't need the wheelchair. And how did you know that? Because I could walk. Do 
did you and your mother obtain any kind of advantage by you being in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. What kind of advantage did you obtain? Financial. Um, attention. Charity. Financial mean money? Yes, sir. Did you obtain money as a result of you being in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. <laughs> How did that work out? How did that happen? Experts later determined Dee Dee used Gypsy's fake illnesses as a way to cash in on everything from make-a-wish trips to a home built by Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I asked you why you obtained an advantage for being in a wheelchair, and you said people gave you money. And then I, I think my next question is why did they give you money? Because they felt sorry for me. They believed the lie. They believed the fraud. The docu-series revealed that for years, multiple members of Dee Dee's family say they knew Gypsy could walk and was healthy, but still didn't question her wheelchair use. On top of that, Gypsy revealed her mother's family kept another darker secret, that her grandfather, Dee Dee's father, sexually assaulted Gypsy for years. Gypsy said, quote, I feel like releasing all of that would be very therapeutic for me. She alleges her grandfather, Claude Petrie, brought her to a woodshed behind his home and forced Gypsy to touch him. She said, quote, at nine, I don't think I knew it was wrong. Her grandfather told her not to tell anyone and, quote, I didn't want to get him into trouble, so I kept quiet. Claude Petrie denied these allegations and instead said Gypsy tried to touch him. He has never been charged with sexually assaulting her. But Gypsy doubled down, saying, quote, there is no part of me that questions if this happened or not. This 100% happened. He can take this to his grave if he wants to, but the one person that is not going to visit him at his grave is me. Gypsy says she only made this bombshell revelation to her stepmother, Christy Blanchard, after she was in prison. Christy, who married Gypsy's father, Rod Blanchard, when she was still a child, believed for years her stepdaughter was chronically ill. Rod told documentarians he believed the same, saying Dee Dee's facade was too convincing to dispute. What illnesses did you believe you had? Cancer, muscular dystrophy, I needed glasses, I needed hearing aids, seizure disorder, and I can't remember what else. And when did you figure out that you weren't actually sick? I started to piece things together when I was about 19 years old. Then I didn't understand the full extent of how healthy I was until after I got arrested. Dee Dee's family explained she grew up with a heart murmur, which they hypothesize could have led to her forcing fake illnesses upon Gypsy. For years, Gypsy herself believed she was really ill. I thought that I was going to die. Like, I thought that I yeah. was a dying child. Yeah. Throughout childhood, Gypsy underwent multiple unnecessary surgeries, including the insertion of a feeding tube that she didn't need and the removal of her salivary glands. That led to Gypsy losing multiple teeth. Right now, she only has 16 real teeth. In multiple current photos, you can see her dentures. Dee Dee's insistence that her daughter was ill was only exacerbated by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. She claimed Gypsy's medical records were destroyed in the storm. This led to Dee Dee fudging the years of Gypsy's birthday to make her daughter appear younger than she really was. Gypsy now says she realizes her mother was suffering from a mental illness. People often get wrong um, that my mother was just an evil person, um, and then that's not the case. She suffered from mental illness, um, so I don't think that she was ever purposely trying to be mean or hurt me. Um, I think it was maybe something that she just, it was out of her control. Um, you know, it is called a, a disease for a reason. It is called mental illness for a reason. Um, so, you know, I want to bring awareness to that. The pair moved from Louisiana to Missouri in 2005, and soon the Missouri Department of Family Services visited Dee Dee and Gypsy's home. A doctor reported Gypsy as a potential kidnap victim after getting wind of the discrepancies in Gypsy's medical documents and was concerned. Still, Gypsy lied about the situation. Why did you not tell doctors that you knew you could walk or you didn't believe yourself to be ill during the time that you were doing this? I didn't 
felt that it would eventually tell my mom, and that would make my home life even worse for me. I feared her more than I feared anyone else. This stress led to a new habit of vaping and later smoking, something Gypsy said she did for about a year. But the real bombshell came in the form of a prescription pill addiction. Gypsy says she developed after stealing her mother's Vicodin. It happened when she was about 16 years old, and she called it a, quote, escape from reality. Though she didn't know it was addiction at the time, Gypsy went on, quote, I knew it was a craving. It was all that I could think about. For the first few years of her prison sentence, Gypsy explained she used drugs to cope. She chased the same high by using Suboxone, a drug used to treat opioid addiction. She even begged her stepmother for $50 to pay for her habit. At the time, Gypsy lied and said she broke a fellow inmate's CD player and needed to repay her. I'm reprogramming myself and it takes a minute. I don't think I'm like my mother at all. I try actively not to be. At one point, Gypsy met a man at a comic book convention and snuck out of the house to meet him. When Dee Dee found the pair, Gypsy says she was chained to the bed for weeks with handcuffs and a dog leash. She took me back home. She smashed my computer and my cell phone. She chained me to a bed for two weeks. In the docu-series, Gypsy reveals that her mother put a voodoo hex on her at that time, burying a jar in the backyard with a cow's tongue and menstrual blood, cursing Gypsy to a life without love. According to her family members, Dee Dee dabbled in spell casting and magic. But all this made Gypsy even more desperate. Who initially brought up killing your mother? I did. A bombshell reveal in the docu-series shows Gypsy attempted to kill her mother prior to Dee Dee's death. Gypsy admitted to pointing a gun at her mom and firing multiple shots, even hitting her mother with the pellets. It wasn't until after she pulled the trigger that Gypsy realized it was a BB gun. When she was treated for the injuries, Dee Dee told doctors she was robbed at gunpoint in a Walmart parking lot. As a way to create more space for herself, Gypsy created a Facebook page she hid from her mother, where she would communicate with her secret boyfriend, Nicholas Godijohn. How did you meet him? On an online Christian dating website. Do you remember the name of that site? ChristianDatingForFree.com how old were you when you met Nick? About 21. In June of 2015, what did you consider your relationship to Nick to be? What kind of relationship? We were boyfriend and girlfriend. And when did you become boyfriend and girlfriend? In October of 2012. When did you first meet Nick in person? March of 2015. So between October of 2012 and March of 2015, you hadn't actually met Nick in person? That is correct. How did you, how, how, what type of relationship did you have during that period of time? Online relationship. And by online, what do you mean? Strictly communicating through Facebook. Any other ways other than Facebook? Um, instant text messaging emails. Prior to March of 15, when you indicated you met Mr. Goody John for the first time in person, had your mother met him? No, sir. Did she know he existed? No, sir. Why is it she didn't know? Because it was a secret relationship and my mother would never allow me to have a boyfriend. Why not? Because she controlled every aspect of my life. Did you and Nick ever talk about the fact that you were not allowed to date? Yes. How many times do you think? I don't remember. Did you and your mother ever have any discussions about whether you were ever going to be able to date? Yes, sir. Did you and Nick talk about that? <laughs> we may have. What did your mother say about your ability to date going forward? She said that it would never happen, that she would never allow it. What about marriage? Did you and Nick ever talk about marriage? Yes. Did you and your mother ever discuss whether or not you'd be able to get married someday? Yes. What did she tell you? She said that she wouldn't allow it. Gypsy confided in Go to John that her illnesses were fake and explained her mother's abuse was only becoming more frequent. I was growing in increasingly desperate to get out of my home life. 
Did you tell Nick that? Yes. And what was your mom doing that caused you to be more desperate? Things were getting physically and more physically abusive. The hitting was more. The starving was more. Now, you mentioned you were in a wheelchair. Uh, were you required to act any certain way when you were in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. How was that? She would have me stay very quiet and pretend like I couldn't walk. Gypsy feared others may not believe her about the abuse and fake illnesses. Together, she and Goda John theorized ways to free Gypsy. Why not just tell somebody rather than kill your mother? Why was that not an option? I truly didn't believe that nobody would believe me if I told it to My mother had legal documents in place saying that I was incompetent, and I thought that meant that if I went to anyone with police or told anyone, she would just have them convinced that I was making everything up. Who talked who into killing your mother? I did. I talked him into it. In the end, the pair decided it would be go to John who would kill Dee Dee. He planned to take a bus from his home in Waukesha, Wisconsin, to the Blanchard's home in Springfield, Missouri. Had you discussed alternative methods of killing your mother? Yes. What other alternatives had you considered? Poison, arson, gun. Why did you not consider poison? It was too hard to find an odorless, tasteless poison. Why didn't you kill your mother? I didn't believe I could do it. Could you explain what you mean by that? I don't like blood. I don't like the sight of blood. Frankly, I'm too squeamish, so I just honestly didn't believe I could do it on my own. A bombshell reveal in her docu-series that Gypsy recorded a to-do list for Gota John prior to her mother's murder leading the camera on a path throughout their home and pointing out when go to John should stab Dee Dee. Gypsy told interviewers she was high on Vicodin at the time of the video's recording. You could hear your mom, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you heard her scream? Yes, sir. And, and she screamed your name? Yes, sir. When Gota John arrived at her home, Gypsy hid in the bathroom, but heard her mother scream her name as Gota John stabbed her to death. You know, the murder just happens again and again and again in my mind. I'm free physically, but I'm not free from the trauma. After that, Gypsy says Gota John raped her. The pair stayed in Missouri for several days before taking a bus to Gota John's home in Wisconsin. After writing a cryptic message on Dee Dee's Facebook account, investigators found the crime scene and later tracked down Gypsy and Gota John. In this series, Gypsy revealed Gota John wrote to her in early 2019, saying he wanted to be with her and did not regret her mother's murder. She wrote back, though, saying she does not want a relationship with him. Gypsy accepted a plea deal in 2016, while Gota John was tried and convicted of first degree murder in 2018. Now, almost a decade after the crime, Gypsy walks free. Experts say it will be a challenge for her to acclimate to life on the outside. It's shocking for anyone. Honestly, we're, the prison system is setting up a lot of people for failure. Uh, a majority of people end up just getting back into prison simply because they can't meet the criteria for parole. Right? They, can't, they find it difficult to get a job. They find it difficult for housing. Family members, if any even exist, probably have ostracized them because of whatever the crime was. I mean, it's very difficult for these individuals to come out of incarceration and then find success. It's, it's very, very rare. But according to her social media pages, Gypsy is doing just fine in that department. Hey, everybody. So we are in Times Square. Look at this. Isn't this epic? Oh my God, I'm so enjoying my time right now. Um, we're just walking Times Square and doing a little shopping. I bought an I Love New York t-shirt, which was on my bucket list, so that was pretty awesome. Multiple videos show Gypsy on a press tour in New York where she's seeing the sights. Hey, so we bought tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway, and we are about how many minutes away? Starts at seven, and it's like... 
We are 10 minutes from showtime. 10 show minutes time. away. So we'll tell you how it is. It's going to be amazing. I read the book, love the series, and it's going to be an amazing show. We got great seats. Yeah, we got look at these right seats. On, right on the balcony. Look at these seats. Oh, yeah, that's real, real nice. I opened up the windows and I'm like, I've never seen tall buildings like this. <laughs> She's also seemingly embracing her new sense of style, showing off her outfits and makeup. Hey everyone, so this is my outfit of the day. Everything is Zara, my top, my shorts, my shoes, and my makeup was done by the lovely Miss Isabel. So I think I look pretty cute. Get ready with me for my lifetime press day. When they filmed the doc, did they bring people in to do your makeup? No, no, no I did my makeup. Yeah. But what Gypsy may be most vocal about is her husband, Ryan Anderson, a sixth grade social studies teacher in Louisiana. I mean, here's the thing. I'm newly married. Why do you don't play? <laughs> Gypsy and Ryan got married back in 2022 while she was still serving time. The docu-series also gave us insight into the relationship that went on for more than a year before they ever met in real life. Anderson told reporters he first, quote, learned about Gypsy while watching her story and felt, quote, sad for her. I felt like I couldn't judge her for that. He also said when his former employer learned of his relationship with Gypsy, they asked him to resign, saying that the relationship posed a danger for students. He since found a new job teaching. The first time he and Gypsy met in person, they spoke for four hours straight. Anderson proposed during their third visit, and they were married after their seventh in-person meeting on July 21st, 2022. I'm here for the long haul, like till death is part of me. Gypsy's stepmother and father told documentarians they had doubts about the marriage, which is why Christy Blanchard suggested the pair get annulled about three months into their marriage. This came after an argument between Anderson and Gypsy about one of her ex-boyfriends. When the pair started therapy, they decided to stay together. They now plan to have a traditional wedding that her friends and family can attend in person. The pair noted that Chillicothe Correctional Institution did not allow conjugal visits, but they have not shied away from discussing intimate details on social media. And the D is... Experts say though the pair have been together for several years, it will be a transition as they begin to see each other in person regularly. Yeah, it's it's hard to say because we don't really know the type of relationship that they actually have. Yes, they're married, but does she even know what marriage actually means? Does she have a marriage relationship or a marriage type relationship that any one of us would see as being conventional or even unconventional? Just anything that would make kind of logical sense in terms of intimacy. There's no guarantee that any of that is there and just could actually be another source of exploitation, either from Gypsy or towards the husband. And while several new bombshells were revealed in the tell-all, a few things were also left out. To start, the series breezed over Gypsy's relationship with one-time fiancé Ken, who reached out to Gypsy after the premiere of the HBO doc about her case called Mommy Dead and Dearest. Ken proposed to Gypsy back in 2018 and even gave her two engagement rings before the pair called it off. Gypsy told interviewers the fame was too much for Ken, but didn't go into much more detail. The doc also breezed over Gypsy's other ex, Nicholas Godijan. Just last month, his defense team filed an appeal for a new trial, citing ineffective counsel during his first go-around. They allege Godijan's first team failed to highlight his autism disorder saying a neuropsychologist specializing in the disorder should have testified. His current defense argues that go to John should have never been charged with first-degree murder because his mental state doesn't meet the right requirements. Right now, he's still serving a life sentence. Law and Crime has reached out to Gypsy's team for a comment, but have not yet heard back. We'll bring you any developments in her story as they unfold. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.